Hi, everybody. Father Bill Holtzinger, pastor of Holy Trinity Catholic Church in Beaverton, Oregon, and this is your Friday Reflection. Well, I want to share with you, I got a box today. I'm going to do an unboxing, uh, sort of. Uh, I mean, is, is there something in a box? And I can already tell you what it is. It's from Word on Fire and Ministries, and it is a book, right? It's a particular kind of book. It's part of the scriptures. I'm going to open this up in a second, but I thought... Before I get to that, I talked about I would talk to you about something about the Bibles, and I hope you have a Bible. Often people ask me what Bible I recommend, and I will just do this very quickly. If you are looking for a Bible that is uh, something that you would he- read almost word for word at Mass, then a New American Bible is perfect. Now, this particular one is not the revised version. There's now a revised version, and it's called the NAB New American Bible Revised Edition, and. Uh, you might want to pick one of those up, and those can be found almost anywhere. Uh, our local Catholic bookstores, we have a couple here in Beaverton, which is a privilege. You can also buy them online. In your Bibles, you may want to put uh, tabs and things like that on them so you can get to the sections quickly. Uh, this one, because of its, this is the entire Bible, so this has very thin pages by the very size. This is a kind of like a travel size, you might say. Um, and it has footnotes in it. The tricky thing I'd say with the footnotes on the New American Bible would be sometimes they're scholarly, and that may not be what you're looking for, but uh, that's the New American Bible, and you can get that. Another one, which is really good. By the way, the New American Bible is a very literal translation. Um, this is also another option, the New Jerusalem Bible. That would mean, then, of course, was there one before that, the Jerusalem Bible? Yes, there was. This is an excellent uh, translation, and notice the thickness, right? It's pretty thick. And it's thick because it's using, uh, well, thicker paper. (laughs) And so that means that you might be able to write in this uh, a little easier. This one uh, also is originally, I think, in French. But then from there it comes to, or it it picks up from the original languages of Hebrew and Greek. And that's just important. So the New American Bible that uh, I just mentioned earlier is a literal translation, as is this, meaning that they're trying to get word for word the actual meaning of the text and the words ideally to be faithful for that. This one has even better footnotes. You can see here's the, some text, and there's footnotes there. I found these to be wonderful uh, footnotes, probably and possibly um, as good as, if not better, than the New American Bible, which was published by the U.S. bishops. And this one is often used, I believe, uh, also in Canada. So that would be probably why that's popular in French. So that's that one. Get that off to the side. I have a great uh, box for that. There we go. Put that aside. Um, here's another one. <clears throat> this is a great one. That, this is the Ignatius Catholic Study Bible. This is not the entire Bible. This is the New Testament. And uh, what's wonderful about this is uh, it's using the RSV, the, not the New American Bible, but the, the R- NAB, the RSV, the Revised Standard Version, which is even more literal. Uh, but the texts here have commentary from biblical Catholic Bible. Catholic biblical scholars like Scott on and I love them because they're also very pastoral they're called like hermeneutical reflections uh, and they really I found this be a wonderful way to uh, reflect on the scriptures the in this particular edition of the Bible there's also uh, footnotes but they have little uh, tags on them for example if there's a little Bible here this says notes are marked by the icon to relate to the content and unity of scripture showing how a particular passage of Old Testament scripture connects with the New Testament. This little dove symbol here, notes, it says, notes marked by this dove icon ex- uh, examine particular passages in light of the church's living tradition. Because the Holy Spirit both guides the magisterium and inspires the spiritual sense of the scripture, these annotations supply information along with both of these lines, along both of these lines. And then there's a set of keys here. That says here, notes marked by the keys icon pertain to the analogy of faith where we spell out how the mysteries of our faith unlock and explain one another. This type of comparison between the Christian belief displays the coherence and the unity of defined dogmas, which are the current, the church's uh, infallible, excuse me, which are the church's infallible interpretations of scripture. So that's what's wonderful about this. And you can see that as you go into a section like here, St. Luke, you have different icons for the, uh, the actual commentaries there. And I really would encourage this. This is a great one. I read this often for preparing for my uh, homilies. That goes over here. And here's an curious one. You're probably going to buy this, but this is a complete parallel Bible. Now, there's lots of Bibles, but what is a parallel Bible? This has with it, by the way, the New Revised Standard Version, 
So we I just mentioned was the RSV. There's an NRSV. So this is the NRSV. So New Revised Standard Version, Revised English Bible, New American Bible, and the New Jerusalem Bible. So it has all of these Bibles now. Notice how thick it is, right? So just take a look at this. So I'm just going to open this up to a passage here. So here is John, the Gospel according to John, and it starts with a New Revised Standard Version. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, was God. In the Revised English Version, in the beginning, the Word already was. The Word was in God's presence. And what God was, the Word was. So you can see how that's a little different, right? The New American Bible, this is going to be very much like the New Revised Standard Version and the Revised Standard Version. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And now the New Jerusalem Bible. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So they're close, um, and you'll see just a change in the English variation, the, the English revi or the revised English version. But if you want to just check out how all the different translations uh, compare, and that you can see they don't compare much differently here, uh, that would be helpful. You can see they're also formatted a little differently from each other. But like that's one text. That's New Revised Standard Version, the Re Revised English Version, the New American Bible, and the New Jerusalem Bible. So that's that one. <clears throat> and then I mentioned I got something from, from Word on Fire. Well, actually, I was given this as a gift. This is a gift of the Gospels, and this is the RSV as well, the Revised Standard Version, and again, an excellent translation. And this comes from uh, Bishop Barron's uh, ministry of Word on Fire. What it does, you know, you can get this in a paperback, a hardback, in this case, it's the leather bound. And when you look at this, it's got a little bit of difference to the other ones. It's emphasizing beauty. So the book has an embroidered image on the front. It has gold uh, on the leafed edges of the pages. And there's colors and graph, uh, graphics here that are intended to help us understand the beauty of the church. So let me get to that. I have to turn pages here. So here's an example. So here is something about St. John the Baptist. So if you read something about St. John the Baptist, they'd include like a graphic of that. And then things about the images that are in this. So you see this image here, right? But then there's particulars about that image that are helpful to learn about. So you get an appreciation of art as well as the scriptures itself. So this is a beautiful translation, and it has commentary by Bishop Barron, I think, and others as well, including saints. Here we go. They have little, here we go. Here's an example of uh, something from one of the saints. The Pen, uh, Paradoxes of Christ by Gregory of Nazianzus. So anyhow, that's that. It's beautiful. But guess what I got in the mail is a box. So I got to share with you the box. Let's share the box. I first need to get a... Razor blade. Open this up. There we go. And ooh. okay, put that box down. It looks like the, that's another box. It says "Word on Fire." And it's the rest of the New Testament here, right? Acts, the letters, and Revelation. Let's open this up as well. So it has a box here. I'm going to use my fingernails. I'll put that on my lap here. <clears throat> there we go. I don't recall this one coming with a box. This one did not come with a box. But this one did. So let's open up the box here. Alrighty, there we go. Just opening up the box. There it is. Again, ooh, it's a little thicker. There we go. There's they are there they are two, two of them. There we go. And this one follows the same idea. So I've not looked at this. This is the first opening. Don't you love the smell of new books? Yeah. No, okay, I love that. That's great. Okay. Acts, Letters, and Revelation. So, it's going to follow the same approach here. Uh, we'll just kind of open this up for the first time. And this is the Book of Romans. So here's a picture, a, a piece of art. 
from Giovanni de Paolo, the creation of the world and expulsion of paradise. So this is a piece of art from him. And then there's descriptions like the concentric circles and the fruit trees, what those are symbolizing. Again, same idea here. So here's a commentary in Romans 8 that's entitled Size Too Deep for Words and it's by, by Jean-Pierre de Cousade or I think Jean-Pierre de Cousade. Sorry, I can't speak French. <laughs> uh, here's an, uh, Over here it says Permanent Unease, Clarity of Vision from Bishop Barron. So there's um, commentary throughout and beautiful images um, like here, for example, a word study. There's the word uh, love or agape is what it looks like in Greek. And that's how you pronounce it, agape. And it's a noun meaning charity, love, and high esteem. Anyway, I'm kind of looking forward to this. Here's some more beautiful artwork. But again, it's uh, intended to help the Bible be more accessible to the average reader. And our Protestant brothers and sisters have done things like this. Uh, I have like a superhealer's Bible. Um, and there's a good news Bible. There's a lot of things that have been done uh, by the different groups. And this is the latest of the attempts to bring the Bible, uh, make it more accessible for people. So um, this is a little more spendy, though. So I, you may not want to purchase something like this, and it's leather bound. You can get a hard bound and a, I think, a, uh, a soft bound as well. Prices for this are going up, and that's why I decided to, to grab this before the prices go up on it. So there you are. So I hope, oh, you know what? One more thing. One more thing. <clears throat> this is not necessarily a Bible, and this is hard to find, but it's called the Synopsis of the Gospels, or the Four Gospels. This is cool because, <clears throat> oops, you may want to look up, this is really for people that are doing Bible studies, and they want to say, well, what, how did this one story vary between the different texts of the scriptures? And that might be some, a part of a, a scriptural text you're looking at and saying, well, it said this in this text, and in John or Matthew, and it's a little different in Luke. So here we go. Here's an example. Okay, we'll see. The section right here is entitled, Woe to the Scribes and Pharisees. This is Matthew 23, verses 1 through 36. And this is the text of Matthew's account. This is the text of the Markan account. Notice there's so much missing there, right? It's like, huh, and then it picks up again down here. Luke has parts uh, more than Mark does but not as much as Matthew does. You can just see it visually, right? And then John, he recounts this, and there's a lot missing, but then it ties in towards the end of the story here, or the type, that text. This gives you a sense of how the different gospel writers chose to write about certain things, emphasize certain things based on their audience. And in some cases, you'll find that, for example, John says nothing about it, so this whole section might be empty. Let's see if I can find something like that. Well, here we go. This is... Um, um, Mm -hmm. This is Matthew 26, or which, uh, 50, verses 57 to 68, and Mark 14, 53 to 56, etc. So Matthew says nothing about this section. Mark has something in here, and Luke has nothing, and John does. Not a very good example. Oh, here we go. Here's a good description. So... If you were to look and find out about Peter's denial, where was it discussed? It was discussed in John. You can just look right there. It's discussed in John, not at all in Matthew, Mark, or Luke. Those are empty in these sections. So the idea is you're going through the, the Bible, or the, the New Testament text, in this case, the Gospels, and trying to find how they are similar, where they speak about the same events. Because sometimes an event occurs, and it's in every one of the synoptics, as well as John which tells us something that's important, but they may have various things that they emphasize versus another one. Anyhow, so that's that was the one more thing. I hope that you have your own favorite Bible and that you do read it. Of course, there are Bibles online now. I have, mostly I have my Bible on my computer and I have it also online. I use the Olive Tree Bible Reader program. 
And that allows me to get to the Greek and the Hebrew, the original text underneath. I can actually tap a word if I use a certain version of one of these Bibles. And I can look at it and type love, and it'll tell me what version, in other words, which word of love is being rendered in the Hebrew or the Greek, depending on where I'm going. And that helps me to do some homilies. Sometimes I'll go that far in my research to get a sense of what exactly is being said here. So uh, apparently... Snickers isn't exactly thrilled about this, but that's okay, right? He can't read the Bible. And remember, I think if, you're not, if you don't know, he's a pagan dog anyway. So eventually you can pray for him for his conversion. Uh, at this point, uh, he's, um, he's not really with it at this point, And he hasn't learned to read either. So maybe at some time he'll get it. In the meantime, I hope that you pick up your Bible and start reading it. If you're not sure how to do that and you want to read the whole Bible... You might think about picking up or getting connected to the the Bible in a Year by Father Mike Schmitz. And I'll put a little uh, picture up here and look for it. This is a podcast, and he's well into it at this point. But you can start on your own and follow along. It's a, The idea is you're going to read the entire Bible or listen to the entire Bible in one year, and he will read it to you, and then he offers some commentary, which is wonderful. And it's hermeneutical commentary or commentary that you can try to apply to your life. And that's the best kind, right? I think so. Well, folks, this is it for me today. I hope that you have a great weekend. God bless you. Bye-bye.